This is how most people drink tequila. Jose, baby! Woo! But this is how you should be drinking it. Delightful. And if you haven't already guessed, one of those ways is how it's drank inside of Mexico and one way how it's drank outside of Mexico. But how did we get these two drastically different drinking styles? And how do we drink tequila authentically? That all starts with a clear and crucial understanding of what tequila actually is. So let's do a brief rundown on what tequila actually is and then talk about how to authentically drink it. Virtually all the world's tequila is produced in the Mexican state of Jalisco and is derived from specifically the blue agave plant. Now this is really important. True high quality tequila is made with 100% blue agave. If your bottle is labeled as tequila but does not have that 100% mark, that is a big, big no, no. That is actually a mixto and instead of being 100% is usually around 50% and filled with a bunch of other junk. And that is the primary reason why there is such a difference between authentic and not authentic tequila drinking. Because most people grab their Jose Cuervos and what other cheap tequilas they have on site and shoot it with lime and salt because the mixtos are brutal. <laughs> they're not good and they're not quality. And because these tequilas are so popular and so available, most people just assume that all tequila is like this. 100% agave tequilas have much more complex flavors and are much smoother, and that gives you the ability to actually sip on a tequila. If you wanna drink tequila authentically, you have to drink the authentic stuff. Look for bottles that say 100% blue agave. That is the key. Another huge misunderstanding of tequila is that there's only one tequila, the clear tequila, also known as silver or blanco. However, there are actually four different types of tequila. Blanco, which is unaged and considered to have the most pure agave flavor. Then there's Reposado, which is aged in a barrel for two months. Then there is Enejo Tequila, oh gosh. And then there is Enejo Tequila, which is aged for one to three years in a barrel. And then a very recent addition to the tequila family is Extra Enejo, which is aged for over three years in a barrel. Each one of these tequilas has a different color and a very different flavor from the rest. But we're gonna save these aged tequilas for a different video and just focus on the Blanco for now. So if you don't wanna miss the video on these ones, you should probably subscribe. Woo! If that was stupid. And lastly, all tequilas are mezcals, but not all mezcals are tequilas. What? Let me explain. A mezcal is any spirit that is derived from the agave plant. And since tequila is made from the blue agave plant, it falls into the mezcal category. So if you see something at the store labeled as a mezcal, know that it's not actually tequila, but it's made from the same plant. But we're gonna save mezcal for another video too. Now I think at this point, we have a really good understanding of what tequila is and why there's such a big difference between drinking it in Mexico versus abroad. So now that we have all of that out of the way, let's talk about how to drink tequila the right way. So first things first, as we've already established, tequila is actually drank neat and is sipped on, <laughs> not shot back. And if you're having some sort of, you know, Jose Cuervo flashback, I promise you if you got the 100% agave stuff today, you're gonna be fine. If you want to ease your way into this, I recommend chilling your tequila. However, I do want to note that it is traditional to serve your tequila at room temperature. But with that in mind, you can always kind of work your way into that. Now, when it comes to glassware, there is something I wanted to point out. Hey guys, quick editor's note here. For some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to talk about glassware. Riveting, I know. But to keep it short, if you're drinking expensive tequila, get particular tequila glasses. If you're drinking just everyday tequila, drink out of whatever you want to drink out of, but it's traditionally served out of taller shot glasses. All right, moving on. Now, before we drink this, you may have noticed a real lack of salt and lime talk. So do they use salt and lime in Mexico? Yeah, they do, but it is much more subtle and a little less common. Instead of just absolutely ripping salt off of your hand and chomping into a fat lime wedge, the more authentic way to do it is to take your lime wedge, dip it in the salt, and suck on it in between every two sips of your tequila or so. 
but there is also an alternative to lime and salt in Mexico that's found throughout certain regions. It's called a sangrita, not a sangria, a sangrita. Ha, love you so. You may have caught it in the intro. It's a tangy and slightly spicy drink that serves a similar purpose as lime and salt. So let's make it real quick. I just wanted to point out that there's a bunch of different variations of the sangrita, and this is just one version of them. There's also a lot of them that have tomato juice. The one I'm using is more from Hasilico and is a bit more traditional than most. For the sangrita, you will need eight ounces of grapefruit juice, four ounces of lime juice, two ounces of orange juice, and then to kick it up a notch, my boy Tapatio. Okay. Once you have all that ready to go, the rest is pretty straightforward. Go ahead and combine all three juices into a container. I'm using a mason jar here. Go ahead and use what works best for you. On a side note here, I definitely recommend using fresh squeezed juices. It's a pain in the butt, but it's worth it. Now that we have all our juices, grab your tapatio or hot sauce of choice and yeet that cap off and add about five to 10 dashes of hot sauce to it. Now it's time to grab your lanky spoon and give this a good old mix in and make sure everything gets served together and everything's well combined. Once you got everything combined, go ahead and give it a taste and make adjustments. I like mine a little spicier, so I added a couple more dashes of hot sauce. And with that, you have your sangrita. Now all that's left to do is to grab your tequila of choice, pour a couple glasses, and drink. Let's try these out. All right, and now we finally get to drink the authentic way. Uh oh. All right, camera's about to die, so we're going to speed this up. Tequila, 100% agave tequila, and the sangrita. Let's go. See, literally so smooth. It's not gonna put you on your butt like a Jose Cuervo was. It's smooth, it's refreshing. Let's pair it up with this, this and reach out on this next sip. Oh, wow. Like I said, tangy, refreshing, and that little spiciness. I don't wanna say almost kinda continues kinda that that tequila feel in your mouth, but it almost does kind of continue that feel of tequila in your mouth. It's not so much to take away from the tequila, but to kind of add on to that kind of that funk and that spice and that bite, but in a way that almost calms it down and makes it way more palatable. Like I said, and I only rushed this because my camera is about to die. Um, so let's see if we get the outro on this camera battery. It's the next day, same shirt, different day. But that friends is how you drink tequila the authentic way. I really hope you guys learned something from this video and hopefully you're not as terrified of tequila as you were when you first clicked on the video. If you guys enjoyed today's video, I would really appreciate if you guys would either share or subscribe or both. Like I said, I have a lot more to share when it comes to tequila and it would really suck if you guys missed out. So hit that sub button, baby. With that in mind, thanks for watching guys and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Peace.